The clay lady process is easy as one, two, three. First, your students make their project and decorate in one sitting. Second, you let that project dry for about seven to ten days, and then you dip them in a clear, low fire glaze. And third, they're loaded into an electric kiln and fired only once to completion. I want to explain to you the different supplies needed to teach clay the clay lady way. If there's an alternate supply, I'm going to let you know that as well. Now, I've become a clay supply distributor, not really by choice, but because my teachers wanted me to mix and package the reliable recipes that I've used over my 20 years of teaching. So I will give you the information about my supplies, but I also will tell you how to buy supplies in different venues. First, let's talk about the low fire clay. This is a low fire cone 06 clay. Now, don't be confused with cone 06. Cone 06 is about 1800 degrees. Cone 6 is considered high fire at over 2300 degrees. Everything that I use is low fire, really because the colors stay bright, it's less wear and tear on your kiln. Now when you get your clay, you want it to be in a heavy plastic bag, twist tight if possible. If you're going to be storing your clay for a while, go ahead and double bag it or keep it in the box nice and sealed tight. But don't put it in your kiln room because of course the kiln will be getting hot and that will dry out your clay. It's an old school notion that the more you work clay, the softer it gets. Clay is made out of dirt and water, and if you start rubbing the clay into your hand, the water content of the clay will go into your skin and make the clay drier and drier. So if you get clay and it's already hard and already dry, I encourage you to call your clay supply distributor and ask them for a replacement on the clay. Now the clay that I use will be white after it's fired. I don't use red clay, which is really kind of an old school notion too. It's very messy and it stains, but the white clay will look gray or kind of a buff color in its unfired state. The other thing that you might want to know about is a clay cutter. Now it's a very inexpensive tool. It feels kind of like a guitar string in between two wooden handles. Now I've gotten into a workshop without the clay cutter and you can use dental floss. I've even used my shoestring once because I couldn't find anything. Yarn's not really good. I've used that too. But it's just a couple dollars, so go ahead and get you a wire clay cutter. The other thing that I use is a mat. Now this is a really unusual product and it took me a long time to find it. You don't want your students to work on newspaper because the newspaper will get wet and it'll start tearing and going up into the clay. Butcher paper covering the table is okay, but you sure do go through a lot of butcher paper. And you can also use uh, wooden bats. That's mostly what teachers use, except they take up so much space, and then you have to wash them, and then they start mildewing. So uh, that's not really what I enjoy. I like doing this, especially since I teach on-site so much. I use this mat. What I found, this is the covering of a hardback book. It's got a plastic side, it also has a paper side, and you use the paper side for the clay. The plastic side keeps it nice and strong. It's reusable. I've used mine 10 to 15 workshops a week for years and years. But I do want you to know that if you do decide to get the mats from the clay lady's house, you'll need to wipe them down periodically with just a damp, not a wet cloth. Now another alternative supply that you can use that my teachers have told me about is wallpaper. But you want to get the wallpaper squares, you know the sample squares, and a lot of stores will give you those free. But you want to get that with an unadhesived back on them. And then you can use those as well. I kind of like the mat idea because it's a little bit of a Montessori idea in that all the supplies and all the clay stay on the mat and you don't have any problem with students uh, worrying about their tool getting used or somebody stealing their clay. Another tool that I use is an ordinary wooden skewer. Most clay studios will have those metal needle tools. They're sharp, they rust, they're expensive. If this tool breaks, not a problem. Throw it away and go get you another one. And I use this pointed end for cutting. The flat end works great for carving or writing names. You can even use the length of the tool to help divide your clay into the sizes that you need. So I love my wooden skewers. I also use a toothbrush in water. Now, the traditional way of putting two pieces of clay together and making them attach is called scoring. And most of the time you take that metal needle tool and you make little tic-tac-toe marks, put a little water in it, smear it together and put them together. But a lot of times what happens is those tic-tac-toe marks are so deep that it traps air in there. And of course air expands when it gets hot and so when it goes in the kiln those pieces fall apart. I use a, just an ordinary toothbrush dipped in just a little bit of water. You don't need a lot of water. You just want those bristles just a little wet. 
scratch on the surface of the clay, it kind of makes clay Velcro. I call it clay glue. And you'll see me use this when we start talking about the different projects. Now I use a lot of paper products, a lot of paper products. Now there's, there's the plastic wax kind. We don't really like those. I like the heavy duty paper kind. I use cups and different sizes. And you'll see this also in the project portion of this DVD. So you'll get to see how I use those later. Now the clay paints, the clay paints are really just slips. You may be familiar with that term. A slip is just a watery clay. It's really the oldest form of decorating clay. In the ancient history, they would dig their clay out of one part of the earth and make their pots or their art out of it. Then they would go to another part of the earth where it was a different color and they would paint directly onto their clay piece. Now with my clay paints, you can make them just by getting some scrap clay, adding a little water. I use just an egg beater, mix it up, and then you can add about 10 to 20 percent of a ceramic colorant called stains. And you can buy those at your supply, your clay supply distributor. What I do is I mix them up in powder form. The teachers really like this because they can just use what they need. You don't have to mix up the whole jar. I have all of my products divided into two sizes, what I call large school size, which would be for schools of about 900 to 1,000, and small school size if you're only going to be doing projects with about 200, 250 students. I have nine colors to choose from, with nine more coming out in a couple more months. And so I want you to know that these are a good product for you to buy, very inexpensive, although you can make them for yourself. A lot of clay suppliers will try to encourage you to get velvet underglazes or underglazes. And they work okay, but you have to put them on two or three coats, usually putting one coat this way, then cross hatching, then cross hatching again. The beauty of clay paints is they are the color and their unfired state as they are after they fired in the kiln. No confusion for your kids. These underglazes change. You might have a blue that turns pink or an orange that actually turns brown. These colors stay the same. Also with velvet underglazes, they come on kind of streaky if you don't get them on just right. Clay paints are really thick. They give you a really good coverage. And I do want to say the great thing about the Clay Lady Way, since the clay turns white, whatever you don't paint is white. So your younger, kind of inexperienced painters, if they leave part of an unpainted, white's still a color, and so their piece is beautiful, and it will have a clear glaze all across the top of it. So now let's talk about the glaze. I use a Cone 06 Low Fire clear glaze. This will be the most expensive part of the supplies, but actually the glaze could be skipped altogether. A lot of teachers, they'll make their clay project and then they let their kids paint them with acrylic paints. Now the beauty with the clay paints is that they make, they paint, and then the color is fired onto the clay piece. Of course, your clay piece will be a little porous and it won't hold water, it won't be as shiny. The glaze is what makes your piece a little bit more durable, your uh, food safe, you can eat out of the bowls, you can eat off the plates that I'm going to show you how to make, and it makes a nice shine over the entire project. You want a dipping glaze. There are a lot of brush-on, low-fire, clear glazes, but the brush-on is very labor-intensive, and since we're trying to do just a one-time firing, also if you're brushing on, some of the little delicate pieces of your projects might break off. Now I sell, again, my glaze in a large quantity and a small quantity, one for large schools, one for small schools. You just mix one part water to one part glaze. I sell my glaze in a bucket with a mask ready for you to mix together. Again, you can mix the whole portion or just part of it. Most clay suppliers will have a low fire dipping clear glaze. I encourage you to buy all your supplies from one clay supplier, assuring that all your products will work together, that the glaze will adhere to the clay, that fits the clay. There's no crazing or popping off of the clay. Now, of course, if you buy all the Clay Lady supplies, everything will fit together. But if you're buying from another supplier, do a test. Do your project, do a firing to make sure that everything works as it should. Now, these are the supplies that I sell. I also have a couple other supplies that I sell to help support my teachers teaching endeavors. I have a book that I've written, a very basic how to teach clay, the clay lady way, which has eight projects all illustrated, how to buy supplies, how to make supplies, how to fire the kiln, basically all the information you're getting in this DVD. Now I have a couple other things that are available to you. I have project pages, those 45 projects that I talked to you about, illustrated step by step how to teach your children all the different projects. And also I have a teaching manual that again has everything that's in this DVD. So, let's get busy and go make something the Clay Lady way. Mm -hmm.